Hey, how's it going? So I'm just taking a look at uh, this book, which is Animal Farm by George Orwell. George Orwell is a British writer who's very, very good at writing themes that pertain to politics, policies, and governance, and things like that. So this book is interesting in the sense that he was explaining a, a time that he was living in. A time of uh, political uncertainty, the rise of communism, the rise of different powers. So people don't know what was going on. This book is published in 1945. So whatever is happening in this book is um, reflecting the time that he's actually alive and expressing the things that he's concerned about as an individual. So the reason why I like this book, among many other books, is because of the way that it explains the situation in such a symbolic way. So the symbols in this book are deliberately chosen to create a certain effect. So what we see in the beginning is that there's an animal farm which is run by humans, and the animals are animals. So uh, these animals and humans are di uh, are showing two different aspects of society namely communism and capitalism so the humans are the capitalists who just want to um, gain an advantage from having these animals and the animals want to create a communist a socialist society where they're able to share all of the things that they're actually producing instead of just giving them to the humans who are just directing so uh, what happens in the beginning of this book is that uh, there's a, a pig who's well respected for some reason. This pig is respected and is called Old Major. And all of the animals gather around and listen to his dream of this utopia society. So this is an ideal. So this starts with this ideal society, this ideal uh, style of governance where the humans are no longer in control but the animals are rightfully in control. And um, as the plot progresses, the animals take control of the farm, they run the humans away. And the pigs are the most intelligent of the animals in this book. Actually, pigs are quite intelligent in general, but the pigs are the most intelligent. They write the laws. So they write seven commandments that are not supposed to be broken. And then they take over the farm. But as soon as they take over the farm, the, the cows have to be milked or else their udders will be uh, excruciating. So the cows are in pain. So they milk the cows. But the question is, what should happen to the milk? Well, the pigs are like, nah, don't worry about this. We'll figure it out. And um, that is the first sign of this crumbling society. As soon as it's formed, the pigs selfishly drink all the milk. They, they use the milk to their own advantage. So this is the first sign. As soon as this um, society is formed, the pigs drink all of the milk and no one even notices. So um, the book is centered on the theme of leadership and how in every society, in every institution, in every endeavor, there are people who lead that endeavor, who leads that field, who lead that country, continent or region, whatever it is. So this book is about leadership, leadership in business, leadership in perspective, leadership in anything. This is what this whole book is about. So the pigs are uh, identified as the leaders. So they are identified as the leaders because they're the most intelligent. How do they get this intelligence? How do they actually begin to write? is because they start reading books. This is important. So they get, they get all of their leadership abilities from their knowledge. So this knowledge can be acquired by anybody in the animal farm. And they're able to match or even surpass these pigs. But they are not able to do that because they're not able to put in the same amount of time that the pigs put in. But uh, somehow the pigs just suddenly announced that, oh no, in secret, we were studying spelling and all of these other things before the revolution. And now we can write. So they write these laws, even though some of the animals are illiterate, which doesn't help everybody. But that is how our society works. So there are certain people, the intelligentsia, like the intelligent people, the erudites. And um, these people just run society uh, regardless of whether or not their laws are legible. 
they don't matter they don't care you know like a, a corporate situation where some everyone's supposed to know what the boss wants but it doesn't matter if you know the language that that he uses so if you're gonna be part of that corporation you have to be able to understand what they're talking about so this is the same thing that happened with these pigs so they became the elites and um, that is the, the the biggest problem and the inevitable outcome of this type of situation so the pigs end up rewriting laws to suit their own needs they end up um, slaughtering other animals in order to consolidate their powers the pig uh, namely Napoleon who is the leader of all of these pigs ends up uh, consolidating power by raising a pack of dogs who guard him everywhere and who protect him so if you want to say something bad you just hear the dogs growling at you so people are just zipping their lips they're not saying anything and this is what you call a dictatorship so this template this template has been used by different countries throughout the millennia throughout the continent throughout the whole world nothing is new under the sun what has been is what will be and the same template that he was using controlling the media controlling the history controlling the education controlling the power controlling the the, the cash flow and being duplicitous being double-tongued saying one thing doing another and saying that oh no I meant this I meant that and this is what we've seen throughout all of the um, the insidious cases that we have observed over the past couple of years so you can see a corporation who dumps water in a river and that is leadership but instead of owning up to it they say that no this never happened and stuff like that some people believe it some people don't so this ends up splitting the whole society in half so leaders have this type of power and this sway over the people so the first uh, cracks in this society were that there were two smart pigs there was snowball and there was napoleon i think snowball would have been a better leader because he wasn't raising a pack of dogs so i think he would have been better just based on that but he was driven out and he ran away and he ended up becoming uh, a ghost he was like a ghost so when everything or anything went wrong he was blamed for that thing and this might sound familiar in any society that when certain things happen certain things are blamed on certain people whether or not they are present whether or not they're there just says that oh this has happened ah it's because of so and so which might not be the case so you can see this happening in certain uh, issues where for example uh, a president of a country like America can say that we're not gonna allow a people from a certain place to come into this country because we're blaming them for a certain result so this is how it happens so this is how people consolidate power the second thing that they were doing was using a squealer so squealer this is related to squeaking talking speaking and uh, this was the spokesperson of Napoleon of the pigs regime so this squealer was the media so he was always always so cleverly so smartly just like uh, Goebbels the minister of propaganda in, 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 in Nazi German right so he was always just twisting the stories and creating uh, fear among the pigs and among the animals so whenever they, the pigs wanted to do something they, so they started living in the house and then they were like all right if we don't live in the house the humans will come back you certainly don't want the humans to come back do you and all the animals would be like no 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 all right fine you can do that or so anything could be used to that effect based on fear so what is causing fear in certain societies these things are things that are used for control so these could be emotional things like the the, the notion that the people might come back or the very fact that a person is walking around with a pack of dogs so if you're a duck you're gonna be scared of doing anything in that situation and this is what was happening so you might be in a situation whereby uh, some people around your community cannot speak because there is uh, 
an impending a force that could cause them physical harm if they do speak of something. And this is a template of a dictatorship, a template of a totalitarian society according to this animal farm. So um, all of these things keep on happening. And what is interesting to note is that this all started with an ideal situation. Actually, there was this ideal of freedom. Like, all right, we want to rise ab above our oppressors. We've been oppressed for too long. We're also part of this. We can do better. Blah, blah, blah. And then they actually rise. And then they actually fight a war. They fight this war together. Some of them are scarred. Some of them actually die. And, 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 and they have their independence. But after they have their, their independence, the people who they were fighting with consolidate the power and start oppressing the people who they were with. And this has happened so many times before and it's crazy so you think that it only happens in a book like this but no this happens all over the show so this keeps on happening that um um so you you, you could look at different countries so you could look at um in, in in some african states you'd see that um uh they used to be all of the african countries but two were once colonized they were once colonies of a uh, european state <clears throat> well <laughs> except for namibia which was colonized by south africa but uh they were all colonies of a certain force and a certain power and these countries had to fight for their liberty right and then after they fought for their liberty they thought that they were free of all of the tyranny but little did they know that in some cases like i would point to west africa north africa east africa and uh, all of the different places in africa where they they have never had never had a peaceful transition from the first leader to the second leader it's always been a fight to get the the leader who fought for their freedom out so then they had to fight that person off so this is why mandela is such an icon because in his case this didn't happen of course there's some cases that this didn't happen but the overwhelming cases 80 percent of all of the cases within africa have been the same type of issue so it seems like uh the leadership <clears throat> in, in 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 certain african countries has been sort of like an animal farm and um this happens even in European countries, whereby they had to fight off a person like Hitler. And the motivation for this book was actually to talk about capitalism versus uh, socialism or communism. And in this book, he's speaking about Stalin. So Stalin was actually very, very cruel to a certain extent that some people regard him being worse than Hitler because his numbers are bigger than Hitler. And he's not doing this to people of another race or another culture. Stalin was exterminating people who are Russian. So this was in some forms like just uh, hunger, starvation, and people just died. But it was something that was pretty, pretty brutal. So, so this is why this uh, whole, whole work is, is, is written. So it's actually just exposing that whole aspect. And then it brings out the whole, the whole notion of leadership and how people end up fraternizing with the enemy in order to protect their own interests in the case that America and Britain ended up teaming up with Russia in order to get rid of Germany. But Russia was also a bad influence because Germany was a democracy. Russia was a communist society. So <clears throat> they ended up teaming up with the communist society, which ended up uh, leading to a Cold War and all of these things that are now happening. So this is the premise of this book and this is why it's written. So it's speaking about all of these things and how they appear in different ways, shapes, forms and fashions but the pattern is always the same so the template in this book is pretty pretty accurate so in this book it speaks about how you as a leader should be able to uh control your, your yourself everyone is a leader everyone is an example it doesn't matter what you do even if you're a pastor of your church or you're you're you're, you're a president of a, of an oil company it just means that you are a leader even if you're not even if you're just a student who's going to school right now 
it means that you someone who can see you is someone who you're leading anyone who you who can see you is anyone who you are leading because whatever we see we we always emulate and this is how we learn language this is how we learn to grow this is how we get mannerisms this is how we speak how we talk how we communicate and that's how society works so so these pigs ended up letting the whole community of pigs down the whole animal farm down so they ended up being friends with the humans and they actually changed the name of animal farm back to manor farm and they ended up walking on two legs just like people which was against the law but uh they just changed all of the laws rewrote all of the laws and say that all right all animals are equal <clears throat> but some animals are more equal than others and this was the the capstone of their of their of of their conquest so the sad thing in the book i think it's a sad ending that they weren't the animals in animal farm were not able to remove the pigs from power and uh, they just had to live with it <clears throat> so this is the sad ending in this particular story um, but not all stories are like that so it's important for you to to realize this so this book speaks about all of these aspects and how they apply to our lives so my two favorite characters in this are molly molly is the horse who appears to be stupid she's a girly horse who appears to be a little bit stupid because when uh they're speaking about these idealistic plans this vision she starts asking like oh am i gonna have some sugar hmm no uh am i still gonna have bows and ribbons for my hair like no those are human uh creations and all of that but then what she's speaking about is actually her true out true like she's being true to herself and speaking about her real interests and they just uh they just they just dismiss her but she's the first one to leave the animal farm and when she le when she leaves i have to have a favorite one and uh, my favorite one was benjamin the donkey the one who's who's old the, the cynical old donkey because he seemed to just be always bitter but he was always speaking the truth because just saying that hey i've lived a long life and i know that whatever is happening here is not gonna last and whatever they're saying they're gonna do they're not gonna do so you know there are people like that in society right so all of these are symbolic everyone is symbolic of something even boxer the 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 strong workhorse he's symbolic of someone in society so all of these are symbols and the sheep are symbols moses the bird who's speaking about a place in heaven called uh candy sugar candy land that's all symbolic so this is why this bo this book is so beautiful and how it draws all of these parallels to real life and how it shows us some of the shortcomings that we have as people in the form of animals so basically it boils it down to not uh resorting to our animalistic behavior because once we we resort to that because some people to some extent we're living in an animal kingdom if you look outside the trees and green stuff water just like animals so we're living in an animal kingdom so we don't have to be like animals in that sense but we have to appeal to our higher faculties especially if you're a leader and everyone is a leader so especially if you're conscious that you're actually a leader so this is an awesome book and uh if you hadn't had the chance to read it please do and um, just uh, let me know how you feel about it too so thanks a lot and i appreciate you watching this and uh, just check out some some of the links below for some other cool stuff and yeah so thanks a lot for taking the time to watching for to watching this and i hope that you will be a leader of renown